Good morning, family of faith. Thank you so much for being with us in service today. Today's scripture comes from Colossians 3.17. It says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Dear Lord, we thank you for everybody that made it in today. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for your presence. Dear Lord, we ask that you would touch each and every single person here today in the service. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Are we there? Yeah, yes, we are. Uh, this is our annual week of prayer and fasting for this church. We start today and go through Saturday. And each night at 6 o'clock on our uh, West um, Family Faith OK Facebook page, we will have live, uh, <laughs> live prayer. Tonight, our pastor. before you, Father, and receive the blessings. Be with this church today, this year, Father. Bless each person here and all our members. Give them prosperity and good health. We thank you in my name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, son. I couldn't think of a better song to start 2022 with you guys um, than this one we're about to sing. Just Join with us in worship and just, I know that during uh, our warm-up earlier, I really felt the peace of God in this song, and I know that no matter how things may look right now, that God's blessing is always on us, that his hand is always protecting us and guiding us, and that he's just, he loves us with an everlasting love, no matter what.
will never leave you, and that I would not let you be comfortless, but that I would be with you unto the end. I would say to you even now that I have not changed my mind, but I will be with you, and I will comfort you, and I promise you that I will lift you up and bless you and cause you to prosper. Trust me, for I am the Lord thy God, and I will speak peace unto your heart, even at this moment. Trust me, for I am the Lord thy God.
My grandbabies have been attacked, my husband and Madison, and they lost their dad Friday night, Christmas Eve, in a horrible accident. But they're here, and they are speaking the name of Jesus, because this is the only place for comfort. Do you know this? So please keep them in prayer, and the rest of the family, and their grandmother Linda also, and but uh, we know that we are speaking the name of Jesus. And I thank you, family, for holding my family up, our family, because we are in it. Thank you. Are there other needs in the house this morning that you'd like to bring up? Let's go together. Remember, 6 o'clock tonight, we pray together, too, for salvation for those. It's wonderful to be on the line. I always say on the line. But it's so much warmer to be in the house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Father, we don't care what 2022 may throw at us because you are our victory. You are our salvation. You are our protector. You are our guide. And we see revelation in front of our face today. Coming to the volition. Lord, there is nothing again too great for you and nothing too small to petition. And Father, I pray this week of prayer and fasting, hearts are uh, just grow in you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for anointing our pastor as he brings the message. But Jesus, there is no name greater than yours. And Jesus, in your name we pray this morning and we all said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good to be in church. Amen. You don't have to turn this one up. We're a little out of sorts today. Uh, turn with me to Matthew. 7, 13 and 14. Good to see all of you here. God is certainly good to us. Can I hear an amen? amen. I want to preach on the narrow gate. The narrow gate. It's 
scripture reads like this. It is through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads to the way to everlasting life. And there are few who find it. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness unto us. And you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Well, we're here today, first Sunday in 2022, to celebrate your name, worship you for who you are, study your word. Lord, we pray right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would uh, come down, anoint all of us to hear, make it easy to speak. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said? Amen. Jesus always classified people in two categories. There's not three or four or five or six, and there's not just one. There's always two categories that Jesus puts us in. He taught that there's two roads that we travel on, and one is a broad road, the other one is a narrow road. And he said, we're going to be on either or, one or the other. It's not hard to make the decision. It's a little tougher to be on the narrow road, but it's where it leads that I'm concerned about. Jesus said there are two destinies in life. I've read in scripture and heard scores of people talk about, well, this is my destiny. And uh, a lot of times it's a job or a situation or uh, whatever, and people feel like this is my destiny in life, to be here at this moment, this time, to do this thing. And so uh, we're here today, and we're going to try to figure out what road we really want to travel down. Uh, the world thinks that there's probably a third road or a middle road, and uh, there's probably somebody out there today sitting in a coffee shop talking about the value of uh, heaven being so good and big and God being so merciful that we're all going to end up there anyway, and, and uh, so there's a lot of that I'm sure that's going on. But Jesus didn't give a third road, and he didn't say there was a middle road. Jesus said there's two roads, a narrow road and a broad road. And we're going to get on that road, one of those roads, and we're going to travel on one of those roads. And uh, that's just the way it is. And he said the only way you can get on that road is you have to enter by the narrow gate. And I like that phrase. I like the way that's spoken. Uh, Emily has got a picture, drew a picture of the narrow gate. It's tall, it's narrow, and she, you can just get through it. Um, and it says, the scripture says, Enter by the narrow gate because broad is the road that leads to destruction. Well, probably you don't need me to stand here and tell you about how destructive the world is or life is outside of Christ. But I'd be amiss if I didn't share at least a, some things to you about how easy it is to get on the broad road, but how hurtful it is to have the end result of when you get there. The world's in a collision course with 
a um, um, world that's going to collide with a disaster like we've never seen before. It's not going to be a pretty sight. Uh, we see little bits of it every day. Um, drug abuse, alcoholism, so much fighting. We're living in the greatest country in the world and uh, we can't get along. It's amazing to me that you bring people here from another country and the first thing they talk about is how wonderful America is, what a great place it is to live here. Talk to the average American, life stinks, I work too many hours, I'm not paid enough, I'm worth more money, I deserve a bigger house, why can't I... Why, why, are you, why are you against drugs and drinking, preacher? What's wrong with you? Uh, you're too narrow-minded. And the list goes on and on. And we just struggle with those issues in this country. And I, you know, someone said that the reason why global warming is such a factor in America is that we have life so easy, we're looking for things to debate issues about and to struggle with and so uh, we're going to find global warming. That's the problem. But when I got stepped out of my house this morning and walked outside, I'm going to tell you what, they missed global warming by a million miles. <laughs> my feet are still cold. <laughs> so when I left California and come to Oklahoma, all the scientists, and it was on the news daily, they were bombarding us with it that we were heading into the next ice age and uh, yeah, there was no way to stop it. And I thought, as bad as I hate cold weather, couldn't we have it just a little warmer? I don't know if that was a prayer and God answered it and now we've got global warming. <laughs> Not sure. But in 40 years we went from ice age to global warming. Uh, could it be that we just have everything that we could ever possibly want in life? Even poor people live better than the rest of the world, and America is such a great place that we have to find issues, things to fight about. So we'll fight about the weather. We'll struggle about that. Uh, that's not my message, but I just thought that would be something uh, that maybe we could think about today when we think about how cold it is and you're slipping and sliding around on the road. Uh, isn't it wonderful that we have cars to drive with heaters in them yes. and all the things that we've got? Uh, but destruction is what the devil is all about. The sin factor is not that God wants to keep something from you. And you know, I've had, if one, I've had a hundred people debate me there is a God up there and you start talking about sin and don't do this and get your life straightened out and live for God and go to church. Uh, read that book. Read the Bible. The answers are in the Bible. I've preached that many, so many, many times I've preached that thought right there. Stay in the Word. Stay in this book. This book has answers to the problems you're facing in your life. And there's a lot of discouraging things that happen. They just come upon us and, and uh, things out of the blue and we become just literally devastated by uh, all the issues and things that we have to deal with. But there's an answer in this book. This book will give you an answer on how to live your life through the struggles of life and all the problems and all the things that are going on. But I've often thought, you know, when God says uh, he wants you to come to church, it's because the church is a resource for spiritual power. When he talks about it, he desires our worship. It's because it's in our human nature to reach out and worship God. And it's in his nature to want to derive that from us. And so it fulfills him when we worship him and allow him to be God. 
but it fulfills us in the sense that we're obeying the thing that God has called us to do, and part of it is to worship and to lift up God and put him in, set him on that throne in our heart and life. Life gets better when we do that. Let me just talk about drugs for just a second. We're inundated with drugs today in America. And I, I, listen, I know everybody here knows that. But there's over 100,000 people die every year from overdoses of drugs. There's more people dying on drugs than car wrecks, uh, shootings, uh, all the other things put together. More people die with drugs. When you listen to the news, it'll be somebody got shot. They had a shooting down at the mall. They never tell you about all the people that shoot up drugs at the mall, go home and overdose on drugs, and all the people that are dead because of drugs because it doesn't sell newspapers. But nevertheless, it happens. The enemy knows how to fight the human being. He knows how to fight the church. He knows how to come against us. And he never comes at us dressed up in a red suit with horns and a long tail and a pitchfork. When the devil comes at you and I and begins to fight against us, he always comes as an angel of light. Read Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. He comes as an angel of light. So when you see the devil, you're talking to the devil, and the devil's working on you. He never comes and looks like the devil. It, he looks like a friend. He looks like a messenger that wants to help you in your trials and in your struggles. He looks like somebody who would loan you money or put you in a place where your life could be a lot better if you would just listen to him. You know, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, is some scripture verses all of us need to put to memory so that we'll understand who the enemy of our soul is. Because the next time you step out and someone says, well, let's go out and do this or that, or you have a, you're tempted to do something else, let me tell you something right now. If it goes against the scripture, if it goes against God's word, if it goes against teaching the, the, of what the book says. I'm going to tell you what, regardless of how nice it might sound and how palatable to the taste it might feel, I'm going to tell you what, don't get on that road. That's the broad road. That's the road that leads to destruction. I thought while I was putting this message together that before I'm done with this message today in America, there'll be probably 15 people overdosed with drugs, not counting the ones that are going to die in a car wreck because of alcohol. I'm just simply making a statement. I want you to understand where I'm coming from on this narrow road situation. The road is narrow for a reason, and the Bible teaches certain things for a reason. It's not that God wants to withhold something from you. And I've had more than one person tell me, you just, you just, you don't have any fun, and you don't want me to have any fun. You don't have anything, so you don't want me to have anything. You, you just want, you just want to control uh, everything that's about uh, another person's life. Listen, this is not about me. I wouldn't even be a preacher if God hadn't called me to do it. I'd love, listen, I'd rather have your job than to have mine. Hello. Your job's a lot easier than this one. Because when you get down and out, I have to listen to you. <laughs> Hello? Thank you. I've got to have an answer for you. I've got to pray for you. If I had your job, I could just get in my car and go to work. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a little sarcastic. It's been a tough week. But nevertheless, it's true. So we're talking about we're talking about the broad way and the narrow way. Destruction is at the end of the broad way. You can't be neutral about eternal life. 
I know people right now I'm dealing with them. And I've had so many of them tell me, well, don't you believe in deathbed conversions? Uh, not very many. Except the Spirit of God draw a man, he can't be saved. When the Holy Spirit begins to work and deal with you about an issue and a situation, that's when you can get saved. A lot of people face death and go out into eternity and never, ever call upon Christ. I've had people say, oh, I would call upon Jesus if I, if I knew I was fixing to be shot. I would just call upon the Lord. Well, you might call upon the Lord, but the Bible teaches that except a man be drawn yep. by the Holy Spirit. This is scripture. Right. You cannot be saved. You say, what are you trying to say? Trying to say you, you need to get your life right with God now. And you need to stay ready to meet the Lord. You need to stay tuned to God so that when the trumpet sounds, we can make heaven our home. Because that's where we want to spend eternity. My mom used to tell me when I thought I was wild and woolly and had all the answers, my mom used to tell me, and she'd say, when you get down to the end of your rope, tie knot, hang on, and call on Jesus to have mercy on your soul. And I thought, well, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. Man, I remember getting down to the end of the rope, and I remember so quickly tying that knot. Because I remember what mom had said. And I thought, there's a moment this could be it. So I got a hold of God. Started praying. Started getting a hold of God. God put me in that narrow path. Get me off of this broad path. Oh, it seems like a lot of fun. And it, it is a lot of fun. But there's a big price to pay to live there and to be a part of that. So we can't be neutral. We're going to have to make a decision. And when you run into people, they're going to try to convince you that a neutral path is the way they can travel, that they don't have to make a decision until they get good and ready to make a decision. You're going to run into someone. You're going to run into some maybe this week. Preacher, Christian, I don't have to make that decision until I get good and ready to make that decision. Except a man is called of God, he cannot get saved. You don't make that decision. God makes the decision. When he decides to call you into the fold, you better accept the call, the invitation. Yep. You know, I, I've been invited, I was thinking of C.M. Ward, probably none of you know him. But I was, uh, he celebrated, his uh, 50th, <coughs> this cold weather is killing me. <laughs> he, said he was celebrating his 50th uh, wedding anniversary when I was in Salinas and he called me and asked me if I wanted to come and uh, if I would come, be a part of the celebration. And uh, they were having a big get-together in Santa Cruz, which was just right across the mountain. It was been a quick drive to go over. And uh, he said, I want you to come. And uh, I said, I'd love to come. And uh, I ended up that I didn't get to come because I had some other things that came, that came up. But I, I thought, I couldn't have went to that. I, I've always loved and appreciated seeing more. He's been a blessing to me. But I couldn't have went if he hadn't invited me. If you're not invited, you can't go. You can't just be driving down the road and say, hey, they're having a wedding in that. I think I'm going to go. You really can't go until they call you to come. 
It'd be like driving down the street. I, I do this sometimes jokingly, and people say, well, I've got to get ready to cook supper. We're going to have such and such. And my words, my response is, well, what time are we eating? What time do you want me there to eat? <laughs> and he always gets quiet on the other end. They don't know how to respond to that. So I'm hungry, and I, I'd like that to stay. But you can't go. I can't just drop by your house and say, you know, I'll break out another plate. I'm going to eat with you guys tonight. Not unless I'm invited. And so the point I'm trying to make is we can't be neutral. When God invites us into his kingdom, we have to take that and we have to run with it. But a lot of people try to ride the middle of the road, but the middle of the road will only make your life more miserable because you'll have just enough that you'll know you need to, to get on the narrow path. But the broad path offers a lot of opportunities for just fun. You know, you got to have fun while you're young, preacher. If you don't, you're never going to have any fun at all. The narrow road leads to life eternal. It's not always an easy road to get on because the devil's always fighting you when you're on the narrow pathway. Yep. Now, if you know someone that has committed their life to Christ here recently or uh, that can still remember when they got saved, they'll tell you, I didn't realize I had, was having so many battles and so many issues. Well, you wouldn't have in those battles when you were living for the devil because he was encouraging you to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You ever wonder why on Friday nights when you hear a certain song, all of a sudden you get a taste for some sweet wine and loud music? You think that's just an accident? That's just the devil drawing you to that place where you used to go. A uh, guy got saved in our church there in Salinas, and he said, every time I drive down uh, Al Sal Boulevard, he said, there's a place down there I used to go, and he said they had they always, it was a big saloon. They had the front doors open in the in the in the summer, where uh, you could just walk in. And he said, when I drive by, I hear music, and and I can just imagine what's going on. And he said, I've spent so much time there. And he said, I'm just tempted to park and go in. He said, what should I do? And I just told him the only thing I could think of at the time, stop driving down that road. <laughs> stop driving down there on Friday night. Stop looking in that bar. Because that's the power of the enemy. He's pulling you towards that broad road, that wide road. That wide road, It is there is a lot of fun on it. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of people got up um, this morning and they were pretty sick. There's a price to pay. But I, I want to talk about the narrow gate and what it means, at least what it means to me. And someone... Some of what make this a controversy, but uh, I don't see any controversy in it. Matthew 19, uh, 24 says, I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So, uh, there is uh, a gate that has a small gate by it that if you go there at night and you're trying to get in the city, they will not open up the main gate for you to come in. They will open up the small gate and let you in. Now, let's understand something that, that's happening here. This, uh, this phrase that's in Scripture is a metaphor for a narrow opening, and it was a common saying in Israel at the time it was put into the scripture. And 
You could use it for anything you thought was impossible to happen. And you just name, name your poison, and you could say, it'd be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than you could swim across the Atlantic Ocean. And that's the way that was used. It was a phrase. It was used everywhere. There is, in Damascus, there is a gate called the Eye of the Needle. In the Talmud, which is a set of books, there's 550 books called the Talmud, and it's books about the first five books of the Bible and how to be a Jewish person, how to live the Jewish life, the Jewish culture. And the Eye of the Needle is spoken in there many, many times. So it's not something we just come up with today. Uh, it's something that has been around forever. So when people talk about the eye of the needle, what it's saying is, is that it's going to take something that you're going to have to do to get to where you can make this thing work. And what it was designed for, or what that gate was designed for, was for travelers with camels with loads on them in order for them to get into Jerusalem, they had to take the pack off of the camel, and the camel had to get on its knees, and it could inch its way through the eye of the needle, and that's what it was called. I've had people say, well, I don't believe that. I believe they were talking about a regular needle and a piece of thread that was too big, a rope, and you can't get it through. Well, you can believe that if you want. But history tells us that it was about unloading a camel's pack so that that camel could get in to the city because in the cities where the protection was. Outside the city, you were subject to being robbed and murdered and uh, all the other bad things that could happen. And so when we talk about this scripture getting on the narrow road, there's uh, something that has to transpire uh, for the camel to get him in. You have to take the pack off. Then you can carry the pack in by itself, but you don't have to do it yourself. Now, this might not be much to you. You might not think much about it. But when we bought this house up here on Anderson Road, uh, it's a two-story house. It's not a big house, but... Underneath the stairwell, in the kitchen, dining room, there's a door. And it's a regular 36-inch door. But my heat and air conditioning system is underneath the house. Steve knows this because he spent a month under my house putting a new heating, heat and air system in and with Preston. And I think Preston spent quite a bit of time under the house. He probably drives by my house saying bad things about the house. <laughs> we love both of you, and I appreciate you doing it. It's the first time I ever had cold air up in the up the upstairs. But I, it's a pantry, and and you put food various things in there, and, and it's a narrow spot. You see, uh, we want to talk about how to get in the narrow gate. How do you get in the narrow gate? The narrow gate is exactly the same width as the width of a cross. Anything bigger than the cross can't get through the narrow gate. So, Jesus hung on that cross. His blood was spilt on that cross. His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It was spread and it run down that cross. And so the edge of that cross is six or eight inches wide. That's how wide the gate is to get on the narrow path. 
because you have to go through the cross to get through to the narrow road. You can't get there by good works. And I don't care if you give a million dollars to the Red Cross. That won't get you through this gate. I don't care if you're the nicest guy that ever walked or the nicest woman that ever walked and you've got good intentions and in everything that you want to do in your life. You cannot get on that narrow path because of all of those things that you've got in your life that are good and positive because they hang on you. There's other things that's there. There's things that you can't get rid of. You can't get rid of that pride. You can't get rid of that sin. You can't get rid of the, all of those things that are weighing you down. The Bible speaks about all of those things. And the width of the cross, when you start through the narrow gate, the width of the cross takes all the other stuff off of you. You want to get? You want to know what it feels like to be free? Hang on to the cross. Pray the prayer of faith. Allow the blood of Jesus to wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And all of a sudden, all of those things, those attitudes, those things that have hung on to you, they will begin to fall off. They will wash off. They'll wash away. And you can just slip in and get on the narrow road. Now, I said all that to say this. When I first bought the house, and I'm looking through all of the house, I opened up the door. And I said, a food pantry. This is kind of neat. And I got in it, and I was like this, and my back was here, and I scooted sideways, and I got in, and once I get in, I've got room to look around. So that was 35 years ago. So Saturday... I'm thinking about this message. I'm thinking about illustrating this message. What makes messages great is not just the scripture that you use, but the illustrations that you use to illustrate the scripture. So I go up there and I open the door up. Molly's gone. Kids, grandkids, nobody's in the house. I've just got my sweats on, and I opened up the door, and I thought, I'm going to inch through this. starving to death and there was a can of beans in the back. I couldn't get them. What if you got? I tried getting low. That made it even worse. <laughs> I tried to get on my toes. That didn't help. I won't tell you where, but a certain part of my body has grown. <laughs> I didn't realize it was growing. I thought I was the same size I was when I was 18. <laughs> but evidently, I'm not. Because I could walk into that place, that little pantry, and as hard as I tried, could not match this big body <laughs> in. I reached in as far as I could reach in. Couldn't get to where the food was at and the stuff was at. I stepped back and I thought, I wonder how many people have tried to get into heaven, but they didn't want to let go of all the things that they had. Listen, sin is pleasurable. Don't let anybody kid you. There's a lot of fun living in the world, but it, it's a broad path. The reason why there's a broad gate is that when you get on the broad gate, 
Listen, you can drive a semi truck load of sin and get on that broad path. And when you get on that path, it's, there's a lot of room. You don't have to give up nothing. Matter of fact, get put more stuff on. Do more things. The world is thinking right now. People are thinking right now of ways to lure and tempt you to get your money and to control your life through all of these means. The broad path, you don't give up nothing. You just got to get on it. This words are brought, there it is. You just go for a drive on it. You get on it at 90 miles an hour, and away you go, and you just keep driving. But the narrow path, there's some things that has to happen. I'm on a diet. I've got two. I've got two New Year's resolutions that I'm making. <laughs> One is 2022. I want to get closer to God. Preach it, you got sin in your life? No. I'm just not living as close to God as I need to live. Because the times that we're living in is more dangerous yeah. now yeah. than ever before. And I'm talking about the sin factor. I'm talking about Satan. Satan's not afraid. He exposes himself. That scripture, uh, Second Second Corinthians, Chapter 4, where it talks about the angel of the light, angel of light. He doesn't hide himself anymore. No. People brag about it. We got set satanic churches. Yeah. We got people work in the, the cult of worship. I've seen it in California. They cut their fingers off and worship to Satan. They have rituals where they worship Satan. People, they've had human sacrifice in California where they have worshipped Satan. And it was it was covered up, but it was back in the foothills. And it would make the paper, and you'd read, and you'd see something about it. But you didn't, but it, it's not that way anymore. Now, Satan's in the open. And so, I only know of one thing as a preacher. I've got to get closer to God. I've got to, I've got to get closer to Him. I've got to get more of His power, more of His presence in my life. I need to have the touch of God in a greater way than I've ever had before. If we're going to win the battle and defeat the enemy, listen, Jesus is coming. And he's coming quicker than you think. We're sitting around the church and it's almost like we're having a, a slumber party thinking that Jesus is not coming until uh, all the food's eaten and, uh, and uh, we've drank uh, uh, all the soda pop and uh, it, it, it's, it's just going to be good. He's coming one of these days. He could come before I finish this message. He could come before you get up in the morning. But I want to tell you something right now. We've got an opportunity to get closer to God right now where we can slip in and become the same size of that cross uh, and get on that straight and narrow path. You can run faster when you have less weight to carry. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. When a, when a guy is training for a fight, he never tries to gain weight. He tries to lose weight. Right. I'm going to tell you, my other, my other goal this year is eat more salads. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it hard for a rich man? Because rich people usually trust in money. When push comes to shove, they grab their wallet and they say, we'll buy ourselves out of this. This is the way it'll work. But in order for the camel to get through the eye of the needle, the pack has to be unloaded. And the pack has to be set aside. The camel has to get on his knees. And the owner of that camel has to carry the load himself and drag it in. I'm just simply making a statement. I think it's time during our week of prayer and fasting that we need to unload the pack. Hung on to a lot of things. Stuff there, not necessarily a sin, it's just a weight. That weight that so easily besets us. 
Our goals have not been goals that are spiritual. I want to become more Christ-like. I want to become more powerful in the things of God. Where our goals have become too worldly. As Christians, we're seeking, we have too much worldly ambition. I'm not saying quit your job. We're all going to move to the top of a mountain and sit there until Jesus comes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is it's time that we begin to fortify ourselves spiritually. We need to pray more. When's the last time, Dad, you got your family together and you had a Bible study and a prayer meeting in your front room and just give, just giving Jesus a chance to touch you and to, and to give you something in your life? I'm just, make, I'm just telling you the things that we need to do when we leave out to go to our jobs. Are we listening to the radio? Or are we listening to the Bible being read to us? There's some things we need to do to begin to fortify ourselves and become strong in the things of God. God is greater than your enemy, but we must get on that narrow road. Let's Amen. stand to our feet if you want to please. Off and on all year this year, we're going to talk about the narrow road. It's a narrow road. It's a road that leads to everlasting life. There's great joy on this road. There's power in Jesus' name. There's power in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. My desire for me is to have a deeper, deeper walk with him. Anybody here would like to have a deeper walk with Christ? Lift your hand, yes. I just want a deeper walk, preacher. Yes. 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 I just want a deeper walk. I want God to be richer in my life, more fuller. Are you here this morning and the devil's been fighting your tooth and toenail and you feel maybe just a little defeated? Slip your hand up. I'm going to pray for you right there where you're at. Yes. Anyone else? Just slip your hand up. We're going to pray here. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, first of all, Lord, that we have a choice. That it's our choice. We're not made to serve you. We serve you because we want to serve you. We're thankful that there is a narrow road and you paved the way to it. And Lord, you've seen every hand. Some of us are fighting real battles. Some want a closer walk. And all of us, Lord, want your touch upon our lives. I pray, Lord, right now for the next few moments that you just begin to minister and touch our lives in the way that we need. Lord, if there's someone here that needs something special, just have them get out of their seat and come to the front and we'll anoint them with oil and pray for them special. Hallelujah. Let's sing that song. <laughs>